You are never going to find a trained therapist who is going to tell you you're not sick enough. Like, th this, is, this is purely a delusion that exists in the mind of eating disordered people. It doesn't matter if you binge more than you starve, that is still an eating disordered behaviour. I was much more unhappy, much more of a risk to myself when I was Ednoz. You deserve help. Go and get it, please. This is me telling you to. So hello and welcome back to another eating disorder video. I really apologise to those parts of my following who have no interest whatsoever in the eating disorder content, but you start a dialogue and then people talk to you and you get other ideas and there's still so much more I have to say, so I'm trying very hard to create a lot of a lot of cheese and pickle sandwiches for you here with, uh, you know, slices of bread made from different parts of the things that I like to talk about so that nobody gets bored. That's the idea. I'm hoping that my buffet of sandwiches keeps you in interested, but uh, for those of you who are interested in the eating disorder stuff, this video is a video I don't know why I didn't make this video a very, very long time ago. It was inspired because I got a nice email from one of you guys the other day, and I won't mention names in case they wanted to stay anonymous, but they told me a little bit about their eating disorder that they suffered from when they were a few years younger, and they said that it was really nice to have heard the things I've said about the fact that eating disorders can be invisible and that you can't judge an eating disorder by what it looks like and all of this. And the particular example they gave was that they read an article about someone who was eating 86 laxatives a day and because they weren't doing this, you know, their number of laxatives a day was way lower, they felt like, well, am I really worthy of help? Do I, am, I, am I sick enough? The old am I sick enough thing? And that really struck a bell with me because I remember feeling exactly the same. The, the, the awful trigger for me was Maya Hornbacker's book Wasted, and honestly that book deserves its own video. I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to get flamed for saying this, but my god, I despise that book and I am so pissed that someone gets paid so much money for triggering people. Although it's a very, very insightful book, the constant banging of how sick she was and I was sicker than you and the numbers, 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 sick, sick, sick. I read that book at my lowest weight, which was a very low weight. I'm not going to give numbers, but you know, I was down there with what Maya was talking about, but because she was talking about eating 200 calories a day and I was eating way more than that, I immediately sliced my calories in half. Even though I was already emaciated, even though my eating disorder was visible to everyone, I felt so invalidated by the fact that, oh my god, like a real anorexic who's really sick, it's 200 calories a day, that's what I have to do too. No, nobody needs to be eating 200 calories a day. It doesn't matter how low your weight is, how anorexic you are, that, that is unnecessary. That is completely unnecessary. Speaking as someone who has been there, and I don't feel like this is giving tips beyond harm reduction. Like, you don't need to be pushing yourself that hard, and if you do push yourself that hard, you're going to regret it, because your metabolism is going to slow to a crawl, you're going to go into binge mode, you're going to stuff your face, and you're going to feel so out of control, and you're going to hate yourself, and it's, it's just not fun, and that's exactly what happened to me. So thanks a lot, Maya Hornbagger, thanks a lot. Um, so, <laughs> in short, now I've had my little rant, um, I wanted to make this video just to tell you that your eating disorder, if you have one, is valid. It does not matter what you look like, it does not matter how erratic your behaviours are, it doesn't matter if you don't meet the diagnostic criteria, criteria for a specific eating disorder, whether your periods, maybe you got a period last month and oh no, now you don't qualify for anorexia, or oh, you didn't purge three times last week, so oh, now you don't fit the criteria for bulimia. Please don't judge yourself on these things. And even if you do classify as Ednos eating disorder not otherwise specified, so you're one of these people who doesn't really fit any of the diagnostic criteria for other eating disorders, but you still have an eating disorder, it is still just as valid and you are still worthy of getting help. And even if you are in a place where you're like, I, I, I don't really want to recover, I would say still still look for a therapist. Now they need to be the right therapist. If you are in a place where you're still trying to lose weight, where you're not ready to quit your behaviours yet, you do need to find the right therapist. And I'm not saying find an enabler, but I'm saying you need to find someone who is willing to, and who is clever enough 
to let you walk a meandering path round to recovery and you have to feel as though it was your idea when really they were the one leading you. A lot of reverse psychology, a lot of cleverness. This person needs to be intelligent and open-minded. And I say this because I had this situation when I was in drug treatment. And it, as I've said before, addictions and eating disorders, it's very much the same thing about do I want to quit? How much do I want to quit? Am I ready to quit completely? Do I just want to like maintain my weight? Do I just want to use drugs occasionally? It's a very similar thing. So for me, I found a therapist who was the wrong fit for me in that I wasn't ready to recover fully but I did want to I, I wanted to make some steps to improve my life I wanted to cut down what I was using now if he had have been the right therapist for me what he would have said would have been something like okay go four days without using and come back and see what you feel like then or in an eating disorder situation go four days without purging and see what you feel like then and generally speaking, you're going to come back after those four days and you're going to say, actually, I was really productive. I feel really healthy. I have more energy, whether that's purging or drug use, it's going to be the same thing. And a good therapist in that situation is going to say to you, well, OK, just remember that and maybe try pushing it a little bit further and see what you get done and start journaling and seeing what you achieve on the days that you don't engage in behaviours. And if you keep doing this, eventually, usually that person will find, you know what, actually eating a bit better or using less drugs or whatever can be a good thing. It can make me feel good. I'm going to keep doing it. But unfortunately, I found the wrong therapist. And all that happened was that we argued for six months straight about solid, you know, no drugs ever again recovery, which I wasn't ready for. I couldn't take that bigger step. I couldn't see that bigger step. Just like someone saying, right, you have to regain 35 pounds. I want to see you 35 pounds heavier in the next two months. No more purging ever again. You know, you say that to someone who's heavily eating disorder, that, that's, they can't visualize it at all. You have to, it has to be baby steps. And if, so if you aren't really ready to recover, but you're not happy in what you're doing, which honestly, I don't think anyone with an eating disorder is happy, um, find a therapist, have someone to talk through your problems with, and have someone who, when you are ready to take baby steps, will support those baby steps. Hopefully to God, you are never going to find a trained therapist who is going to tell you you're not sick enough. Like th this is, this is purely a delusion that exists in the mind of eating disordered people. And honestly, it's a delusion that I think exists in the mind of every eating disordered person, even the ones who do look like skeletons, even the ones who do, in quotations, look anorexic. Everyone thinks they're not sick enough. Everyone thinks, oh my God, if I go inpatient, I'm going to be the fattest one there, or there's going to be someone skinnier than me, there's going to be someone sicker than me. There's always someone sicker than you. And honestly, although you might envy those people when you are a teenager, like I remember, I mean, this is cringy, right? This is so cringy, but you know me, I have no filter, I tell you everything. Um, I remember when I was. I want to say about 16, 17 years old, on the eating disorder forum, there was this big wave of drama because a girl who was actually younger than me, she was 15 years old, had had a heart attack. And this was big drama on the forum because we were young, right? We didn't have people having these kinds of symptoms yet at all, but she had had a heart attack. And it is so sick that your first thought is almost this little bit of massive amount of curiosity but also like almost a little bit of envy because they're sicker than you. People who want to look sick as opposed to people who want to look you know attractively skinny with their eating disorder, people who want to look sick, it is a cry for help. It is a way of saying I feel so broken on the inside that I need to show it on the outside in order for people to give me help. So this is where so many of us were at with our eating disorders at this point. We wanted help and this girl had just had a heart attack that meant she was going to have been in hospital there would have been doctors going you have to stop this now she would probably have been dragged inpatient they were going to look after her they were going to give her the help that we all desperately wanted and needed and yet didn't feel sick enough to just ask for this is the thing I remember being a teenage anorexic and I felt like I had to wait for my mum to force me into therapy I felt like I couldn't just walk up to my mum and go mum I feel like I have mental health issues. Can I get a therapist, please? I, and it's, the, it's, it's not difficult. You don't even have to say it aloud. If you feel that uncomfortable about it, write it down. Just put it in an envelope, put mum on the envelope and leave it out for your mum to find. Seriously, this is the way I communicate with my mum to this day and I'm nearly 36. Um, 
<laughs> I can't say serious things to my parents, I can't. At that time I just felt like I'm not sick enough, I have to wait till I'm sick enough to be forced into therapy. So this girl has a heart attack at 15 and you know massive surges of drama and uh, she was fine, I still know her to this day. Um, unfortunately she still is very sick to this day and this is this is the thing, if you are young and on an eating disorder forum and you are feeling quite competitive with other people that you know you're looking at their statistics in their signatures and oh my god they're so much sicker than me or look at how much they binge purge in a day or like look at how many laxatives they take in a day and all of these other things that you are very measurable and you can measure and quantify and they seem so much sicker than you um try not to be jealous of those things because honestly i've seen where those people go in the next 20 years and some of them are fine i mean i i know that there were people who looked at me at that age and thought you're going to be a lifer you're going to be in it forever and i'm not thank god and i'm so grateful that i'm not and one of the reasons that i'm not still sick at this age is that i didn't get one of the sick enough things that i wanted which was being really good at purging the people who could purge so easily i was so jealous of that i i wanted to be able to do that i can't and it turns out that i have a partially paralyzed esophagus i only discovered this after i had eating disorder complications with my stomach and i got a barium swallow test done turns out my esophagus is partially paralyzed which makes it very difficult to purge um but the people who did have that, the people who were easy purgers and who I was jealous of in all of these stupid ways, they found it so hard to recover because their eating disorder, they were so entrenched in it. And, uh, and the people who did seem sick enough back in the day, a lot of them are in really unenviable circumstances now that they have become lifers. And I, you know, I saw the sadness and I still see the sadness in these people's posts to this day when they're in their late 30s they're still hunting around for pranorexia forums because they want people to relate to they hate feeling left behind and they hate feeling like my life hasn't gone anywhere look at everyone else they're going places my life hasn't gone anywhere and yet when they do find pranorexia forums they don't fit in there either because everyone is so young they're reveling in it they don't have all the complications that you have if you're in your 30s and eating disordered so this is the future that a lot of these people have that you're comparing yourself to and you're thinking oh they're so much sicker than me oh my god look what's happening to these people it's so dramatic oh my god they must be so much sicker than me they're worthy of help i'm not um you are worthy of help whoever you are and whatever your situation is and whatever you weigh and however many laxatives you take a day and how little or how often you purge how often you binge it doesn't matter if you binge more than you starve that is still an eating disordered behavior and you are worthy of treatment and honestly when you're binging a lot the self-hatred you experience i would say is a far more horrible thing to go through than people who are steady restrictors so people who are at a low weight and who just restrict every day i would say i was much more unhappy much more of a risk to myself when i was ednos and i was binging all the time and losing control and my weight was like and i never really lost any serious weight and you'd look at me and you just think normal teenager that was when i was self-harming the most that's when i had the most suicidal thoughts that's when i hated myself the most so the people who have invisible eating disorders and who are binging a lot they honestly are some of the ones who need help the most i don't deserve help look at me i just look normal no you deserve help go and get it please this is me telling you to <laughs> this is me telling you to if that is your situation go and get help, go and tell someone, tell someone. If you think you're gonna go back on this decision tomorrow, tell a friend, tell a family member, make them get you some help. And it doesn't have to be impatient. You don't have to go impatient to recover from an eating disorder. This honestly is bullshit that has largely been fed to you by health insurance companies in America. The fact that you have to go impatient to recover from drug addiction or eating disorders. Like I would say, if you're at a very low weight or your health is unstable, your uh, electrolytes are unstable, something like this, yes, it's gonna be a good idea to have someone looking after you in recovery, like hospital wise. But day patient can be a good thing to do, or even just seeing a doctor weekly can be a good thing to do. Ultimately, you're going to have to learn to eat by yourself at home anyway. So if you can get a head start on that and do it from home, that can be a good thing to, to do. I never went impatient. It wasn't an option where I lived in the UK. Facing your problems head on and just doing it by yourself, like 
most people with eating disorders are very intelligent. It tends to be a disorder of intelligent people. So you, I would say, are quite capable of finding the info you need on recovery, look up refeeding syndrome, do educate yourself on refeeding syndrome so you don't get that because that can be serious. Um, but you can find the info online, you don't necessarily have to wait for an inpatient slot to start to recover. That's a whole topic for another video. Uh, people who go, I have to get sicker and sicker and sicker so that I can then get healthier when I go inpatient. That's, that's a whole situation that needs talking about too. But yeah, just just get yourself a therapist. Just get yourself a therapist for now. That's that's a step in the right direction, but you do deserve treatment. So please go and get it. And this video is quite long at this point, but I just briefly want to tell you a story about a girl I knew who honestly had the most serious eating disorder that I would say I've almost ever seen. Uh, I don't even know what her real name was. Um, all I remember is her net handle um, and we'll just call her M because that was the beginning of her net handle. So M unfortunately took her own life. Her eating disorder just got too much for her to handle. It, no pun intended, consumed her entire life. It, it, it consumed everything and she took her own life. She was one of the very first deaths we had on the forum. Um, and this girl, she swung in weight between, she started out morbidly obese and she lost down to being underweight and then she gained back up to being morbidly obese, she lost back down to being underweight and she repeated this pattern up and down and eventually she was swinging from real morbid obesity down to being absolutely skeletal and up again and she would give us the weights. So I know that she was losing and gaining round about 350 pounds at, at a time, up and down, up and down, up and down. And it blew my mind because my own weight gain up and downs, I was only going up and down with an less than a 50 pound range. And the toll it takes on your body going up and down in weight, you know, your body having to regrow muscle, having to eat its own muscle again, having to do all of this, it I remember thinking my body cannot take another trip up and down the scales and that was that was you know a handful of pounds compared to this 350 pound journey that this girl made over and over and over again and the last picture she posted she did look skeletal so I believe that was probably the point at which she took a life which makes a very good point that even if you've come from morbid obesity you might actually be at your most miserable when you finally reach your ultimate goal weight is clearly the point that she just couldn't do it anymore. You know, she'd, she'd achieved, in quotations, everything she dreamed of and yet she was suicidally miserable and she took her own life. But that's not why I want to tell this story. The reason I want to tell her story is that you would look at this girl for the majority of the time she was eating disordered and you would see someone who was normal weight if not vastly overweight and any normal person looking at her would not think she was eating disordered unless you knew it and unless you looked hard because when I saw her pictures even after just the first time she dropped the weight and then gained it again, you could almost see through to her scalp. Her hair was so thin. Her skin had this kind of yellowy gray tinge to it. Her, she just looked, even though she was very big at this point, she looked so haggard because her skin had been stretched and deflated and stretched and deflated. And she, she had this, she just looked sick. You could just tell this person really is not healthy. But with regards to her weight, you couldn't tell a thing. So this is what I really wanna drive home here, is that all the people around you that you pass on the street, you can't tell whether they've got an eating disorder or not. That just to take myself for an example, I at the moment am slap bang in the middle of the healthy weight category, which I'm not super comfortable with, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not super comfortable with that, but anyway, you can't tell looking at me whether I have just recovered from a serious eating disorder and gained 50 pounds. You can't tell whether I was morbidly obese this time last year and I have starved myself like mad to drop this weight and actually I'm on the verge of collapse. You can't tell these things by looking at me. You can't tell whether actually I was like a stone lighter last week, but I've been binging like crazy since then and I've gained up to it. You, you can't tell these things by looking at someone in the moment. And honestly, of all the eating disordered people I have known, 
for the majority of the time their eating disorder will be invisible. Most people don't spend a lot of time down at a really really low weight because generally speaking you will think this is miserable, this is miserable, this is consuming my entire life, I've got nothing else going on in my life and it sucks and you will either put yourself in hospital or you will attempt recovery on your own as I did multiple times and you will regain weight that way um, or you'll be forced into hospital. It's not very common to stay at a low weight for a very 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 long time without something intervening and this is this is obviously another problem with the Eugenia Cooney situation that people see this girl, she's stayed at this low weight for a very long time and I saw someone on a video about her recently, which was a live stream, someone commented to say, I'm a member of an eating disorder forum and Eugenia is like a god to us. I saw that comment and it was really chilling because, I mean, I, I, can, I can imagine, yeah, if this was like 2001, Eugenia would be a god to us too, back at that forum, she absolutely would be, you know, she she never, she never allows herself to go into hospital, oh my god, she never seems to gain weight, uh. um, that is not how most eating disorders look, most people with eating disorders, they do yo-yo, because most people, believe it or not, do actually want to get better, or they at least want to be happy, and they realise this does not make me happy, Eugenia is in a very strange situation whereby her weight loss is making her a fortune and her weight loss has turned into her day job, you know, standing in front of a camera and body checking for eight hours a day, it's become her day job. This is not the situation that pretty much anyone with an eating disorder is going to find themselves in. Most people are going to find their eating disorder isolates them from everything that's going on in their life, it stops them having a career, it keeps them broke because all you can do is be on disability benefit and have 70 pounds a week and you're living on that and it's piss poor and it's miserable and you want to get better so you try to recover and your weight, you yo-yos and all of this this is this is generally how eating disorders go so, so don't don't compare yourself to these very 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 rare cases who do consistently look eating disordered because it's it's not you know it's not how people go in the real world you know I would not say Eugenia lives in the real world in in any way shape or form as compared to most people with eating disorders, you know, and I, I take her as an example because I, you know, she is the most obvious face in the eating disordered sphere at the moment. And I do think there are a lot of people who look at her and go, well, if she can do that, why can't I do that? And it's because you live in the real world, honey. <laughs> and also you don't want to do that. You don't. Uh, it disturbed me to learn that she's 26 years old now because I thought she was younger than that. And 26, is reaching danger territory. You know, I, I remember making a video on her a few years back and saying, she's young, she's going to be fine for a long time. Mm, she's not that young anymore. The 27 Club exists for a reason. The 27 Club is that point at which addicts and self-destructive people's bodies start to fall to pieces. So uh, yeah, you don't, you don't want to be looking at these people as, I want to do that. I would say people who feel that they are not sick enough, oftentimes they are going to want to get sicker. Even if they are getting help, there is still going to be this dark desire in you to prove yourself in a way. I mean, I remember my eating disorder started when I was 14 and for the first year or so of that eating disorder I was Ed Nos, I didn't really lose a great deal of weight and then I kind of recovered and everyone thought I was over it, but for me my goal weight that I'd set for myself, it niggled in the back of my head and I couldn't leave it alone and eventually I was determined that I was going to get to this goal weight and nothing was going to stop me and nothing did stop me and I did get to that goal weight and that is a topic for, for its own video too, what it feels like when you finally reach your ultimate goal weight. But um, yeah, that goal weight had planed on my mind for a very long time and only once I'd got there did I feel like I was worthy of recovery and I, I, I severely don't recommend taking on that mindset, particularly if you've got a very very silly goal weight like I did, like it's not worth wrecking your health just so that you can say, oh I got, I got, you know, while I should have been having fun, while I should have been at university kissing boys and smoking weed and partying and having a great time, 
I was counting cabbage leaves so that I could get to this arbitrary number uh, and then I would feel worthy of recovery. This is a stupid trap to fall into, so don't. Um, <laughs> so yeah, in essence, your eating disorder is valid, even if it's invisible, even if you're not shitting yourself incontinent with a hundred laxatives a day, even if you don't quite fit the criteria for anorexia or bulimia right now, it's all arbitrary. Ultimately, they have to draw these lines in the sand somewhere and it's all pretty arbitrary and everyone is different. But if you are suffering and you are self-destructive and it's making you miserable and it's hurting your body, your eating disorder is valid, your pain is valid and you deserve help. So please go and seek it. Do not wait to be the sickest one on the forum. Don't wait for that to happen. It's not worth it. The longer you stay in an eating disorder, the more entrenched it gets and the harder it is to get out of those behaviours. So as I say, even if you don't want to recover yet, just having somebody to chat to and somebody to just kick around the idea of recovery or at least maintenance is a good thing to do. So do, do try and seek help. Even if you have to just leave out a weird note for your parents or your housemate or whoever you live with saying, I really need to get therapy. Can you make me do this tomorrow, please? <laughs> just go and do it. It's not, it's never going to be as awkward as you think it is. And if it is, then have the conversation through a door. That's another thing I used to do when I was younger, is uh, I would tell my mum I needed to talk about something and then I would shut the door in her face and we would have the conversation through a door. <sighs> I'm very autistic. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I hope you do manage to get help. And uh, props to the person who emailed me for sharing your story and for being so inspirational and for inspiring this video. So thank you very much. Uh, it was it was nice getting into my inbox for once. I really hate checking my emails, but I did it. And uh, I saw your email and it was it was really interesting to chat with you. So thank you. And uh, anyway, I'm going to leave um, more eating disorder content linked below if you are interested in more. And uh, subscribe and all of that if you feel like it. And uh, people who don't have any interest in eating disorders, the next video up will be something else sandwiched in the middle just to keep things varied around here. I'm doing the robot. Um, <laughs> God, this is long. This is long and my voice is completely worn out. So I'm going to shut up now. But um, yeah, I hope, hope this helped even one person. I uh, hope you're having a reasonable day and a good start to 2021, hopefully. So uh, over and out, Toon Pip. Bye-bye. <laughs>